views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show that's coming up right next. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Wow, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's so great to have all of you here. And for those of you that are uh, just uh, have been with us for the last hour, I want to say welcome back for all of you. For many of you, you always ask, well, you know, like, when are you on? When are the shows on? If you go to TransformationTalkRadio.com, we've done something based on your feedback. A couple things you'll see is that when you go there, take a look. Of course, we have our daily schedule, but soon to be posted is our entire weekly schedule. So you can see who is on when and be clicking around and finding out more and making sure you know when Allie is on, Allie Katz, Live More Radio, like today, like right now. Live More Radio with Allie Katz. Stress less, live more. Love, love, love this. Uh, and those of you that are listening, uh, Allie and I are, uh, we did a show uh, that you're going to all hear about upcoming here real soon. But the thing is this, you know, and this is what I said before. I love talking with people that aren't all about just preaching like from an academic or a textbook. But when they have lived it, They know how to tell us about it. And so if you look at her amazing book, Hot Mess to Mindful Mom, 40 Ways to Bring Balance, Joy, and Happiness into Every Day, what you're going to find out is it isn't just for the mom. It's for all of us. But what does Hot Mess to Mindful Mom mean? That was Allie. And she's joining me here today. We are taking on a big one, folks. Cultivate gratitude and focus your attention in the right places. Looking for love and all, I can't even go there. I'm not even going to go there with that song. That would be like a total distraction, but it is part of the story. Allie is living her purpose by helping her clients truly find balance in their lives and sharing her love of meditation very authentically and a relatable way. And if you've if you've listened to her on air with me and if you've worked with her you know what I'm talking about because she's also a busy busy person she she is the hot mess mom that she talks about in the book so she's not talking like about me or about you this is how she has brought her story to the forefront and so here she is embarked on her spiritual journey began meditating noticed that she had lower levels of you ready stress less anxiety, more patience, better sleep, and was more present in all areas of her life. Now, let me tell you why this is important for today. This is important because if you truly want to get a level of awareness and intuitively know how to handle things in your life, you cannot do it if you're off balance, if you got monkey mind, if you are flitting from here to there. So today, get ready to Step into the world of how to cultivate gratitude and why this is so important in helping us focus our intention in all the right places. Allie, it's so great to have you here. Great to have you. Thank you. I'm happy to be here and share this important topic, which can really make a difference in people's lives. So I'm really glad we're talking about this today. 
Well, before the break, I was saying to you that I thought gratitude was one of the most misunderstood, misunderstood constructs, concepts, whatever we have. And the reason I say that is because I think we've stepped out into the world and have said, well, gratitude's all about you. You know, it's like, I got to be grateful for you. I got to be good. Like that conversation, right? And I'm hoping that you are going to open the door and clear this up. Are you ready? Yes. There's a quote I heard recently that sums up gratitude so well. And it says, the per- the richest person doesn't have the most money, but has the most gratitude. And I love that because we can really go through life with a mentality of abundance or a mentality of lack so that we have enough and we feel grateful or we're, we never have enough. And if you live in a mentality, a lack mentality that you never have enough, sometimes for some people it's impossible to fill that. There's just... It's never enough. It's never enough. But when we're grateful for the abundance that's all around us all the time, then we are setting ourselves to live in a higher vibration where we do feel grateful, where we're telling the universe that we want more to be grateful for. When we when we put it out there, when we put gratitude out there, I believe the universe gives us more to be grateful for. We're telling the universe that's what we like. That's what, how we want to live. And so you attract what you put out right? So the universe will conspire on your behalf if you put out feelings of gratitude more to be grateful for. So I I really think that when people start practicing gratitude in an everyday way where it becomes part of your routine to be grateful, then you really see more of that good stuff coming back to you. Well, you know, let's kind of start the conversation with talking about being grateful in our lives and what that really means. You know, I love what you talked about. I love the quote. Um, What do you think about what I said about this idea and misconception of gratitude, right? I don't know how many times I've heard in my life, you know, Pat, you you know, make a gratitude list. And, you know, I don't know if, if I'm unusual or not. But there was a point in time in my life, and when the first time I heard make a gratitude list, I didn't have anything on the page, Mm -hmm. and it was it's clear to me that I had a huge misunderstanding about what that was, and I think really this is really the time to talk about gratitude, the many shades of gratitude. Well, gratitude, you can feel grateful for anything. I mean, you Mm -hmm. can look outside and be grateful that the sun is shining and that, you know, you have beautiful flowers to look at. You can listen to the birds chirping and be grateful for that. You can be grateful that you have a roof over your head and that you have food to eat every day. I mean, certainly when we think about gratitude, we definitely think about some of those big things. I mean, loved ones gratitude for for really anything for your relationships for then we're going to talk about this for the lessons that you've learned in life you know how they help you evolve and grow that's definitely something we're going to touch on in a little bit um really just noticing how lucky you are and i think it's that having that abundant mentality where we do have enough and we We appreciate what we have without always looking for more, but really being, it's part of being in the present moment and being, you know, happy and satisfied with what you have, that it's not always about more and more and more, but really being present and appreciating what's in front of you, I think is a big part of it. Absolutely. Taking a look at what's in front of us. And, you know, this is really kind of cool because this isn't as part of the misconception. It's like people think, well, wait a minute, I need the big thing. To be grateful about, Allie. Right. It's big, not always the big, the big thing. thing. It's no. not always. There's this other quote that I love. I love quotes. You know, I always yeah, use too. them on the show. Yeah. But this one by Alice Walker that says, thank you is the best prayer that anyone could say. Right. Thank you. Thank you for the sun shining today. Thank you for, you know, the time to take a walk around the block. So I always encourage people to think of something you're grateful for the minute you open your eyes in the morning. Make that set the tone for your whole day that you're living with an abundant mentality. Thank you that my eyes opened. What a gift. Thank you for a loved one laying near me. Thank you for the yummy breakfast I'm about to eat or that I have something exciting planned today. When you set the tone for the day with gratitude, your whole day gets better. And then there's lots of other suggestions I give people for ways to cultivate gratitude. I know you mentioned a gratitude journal and that didn't really come naturally to you, but you can practice that so it does feel more natural. Without a lot of pressure, I encourage people to just 
keep a very small one of those like mini pads you get at the drugstore next to their toothbrush and in the morning and the night when you brush your teeth so you're starting the day and ending the day with gratitude write down one thing you're grateful for it could be a great new shirt you bought it could be the fact that you got to spend time with a friend it could be that you were snuggling with your child in bed reading a story it could be anything okay it doesn't have to be a material thing and it doesn't have to not be a material thing it's whatever you feel at that moment so not a lot of pressure one thing twice a day. I mean, it it just sort of becomes part of your routine. And you can actually make it a family project too. We have a family gratitude journal that we keep on our kitchen table. And when we eat dinner together at night, we all take turns going around and saying something we're grateful for and someone's a scribe. So it's really amazing to model if you have kids or grandkids or nieces and nephews to make cultivating gratitude a really normal part of the family routine, which I love. I remember this. This I'm going to say this before we go to break. Maybe we could talk about it because we, we also are going to talk about, you know, what is this idea of being grateful for the bad things that happen in life? Yes, I did say the bad things. Yes, because there are things that happen in life. But I, I remember doing a workshop one day and gratitude was a really tough issue for this entire group of people, right? So I always have to ask myself, what did I bring to the table <laughs> as a facilitator of that yeah. workshop? And here's the exercise I I gave to folks. I'd love to talk with you about it when we come back. I I said, I want you to pair up. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to time each other and count. It's kind of like a little, I I made it a little contest. And so the contest is, and this is what you're going to get. The person that could say thank you, more thank yous in a 60-second period of time will get a, a coffee card, like to a coffee place, right? And that was the most, I don't know where I got the idea from, but I had to do something to change the energy. There was so much anger and resentment in the room. And I will tell you this, one person actually refused to even do it. Wow. That's how much was going up there. That that is like, (laughs) that is like gnarly crowd of people. But when we come back, We'll talk about this idea of gratitude. And I didn't even tell folks, Allie, to say thank you for this. It's just two words. Because a long time ago, a long time ago, someone said to me, Pat, I just want you to say thank you 70 times a day for 70 days. And I said, well, thank you for what? And they said, thank you for nothing. Just thank you. And as I'm sitting here and I'm watching this little squirrel out my window jump into my newly planted geraniums and look for food, I get to say thank you for the playfulness that we have in life through nature. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. Put a little Woo-hoo! in your life with Keys. Keys Clear Protein Waters have 22 grams of smile making, attitude adjusting protein in every bottle. Did I mention its tongue tingling taste? Not just another guilty pleasure. With Keys, you'll enjoy every low sugar sip and freedom from gluten, lactose, and GMOs. Who needs the fountain of youth when you can find Keys on Amazon or at Keys, K E E S, please.com? Put a little woohoo in your attitude with Keys Protein Water. Tune in to the hit show Masters Chambers with your trusted friend, Connie Fife. Mondays, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Each week, Connie will connect you with the best of the best thought leaders from around the globe to share their strategies and best practices. Getting better together. To book Connie, visit ConnieFifeSpeaks.com. 
Tune in to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. The Lucid Planet. Welcome home. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for more information. My dream is to end homelessness. My passion is living a green life. My dream is to end poverty. My passion is volunteering. My passion is making a difference. My dream is to cure Lyme disease. My passion is rebuilding communities. My passion is helping those in need. My passion is caring for the elderly. My dream is to find a cure for cancer. My dream is to leave a better world for my children. We all have that special passion, that lifelong dream that drives us to live our lives with meaning and to create a better world. No matter what drives you, we can all make an impact. Dr. Pat Basile is helping others make their dreams come true so we can all help make our world a better world. To learn more about how Dr. Pat is building a community of sharing hope, strength, funds, knowledge, and information, visit abetterworldcrowdfunding.com today. That's abetterworldcrowdfunding.com. I got a feeling that tonight's gonna be a good night. That tonight's gonna be a good night. That tonight's gonna be a good, good night. Yeah, tonight is gonna be a good night. Today is gonna be a great day. And your life is actually destined to be epic. Thank you for joining us here today. It's so great. I love, I love, love chatting with Allie. And I just want to say, we're going to give you a website before we tackle this. But, you know, before we get into the idea of gratitude when bad things happen in the world, what that means and why that's important, Allie, please tell folks how they can find out more about you, how they can get a copy of your just incredible book. Awesome. I would love to. Um, You can find me at livemoreradio.com, and I um, have information about my meditation classes, which I teach via Skype, phone, FaceTime, so I can, you know, teach anyone in the world to begin or deepen a meditation practice. And I also do one-on-one self-care and mindfulness coaching. And you can find about all that information on my website too. And then my book, Hot Mess to Mindful Mom, is available on Amazon. So very easy for everybody to get. Oh, I know. And it's been incredible. And we've got some more news about uh, what Allie's putting together to help all of us. And by the way, you know, Hot Mess to Mindful Mom, this is not a book just for moms. Can we talk about that for a minute before we jump into gratitude? Yes. Um, It really is all about self-care and it's 40 tools that you can use to bring more joy, happiness, and balance into your life, whether you're a mom or not. So the title says mom, but it's really, these are tools that anyone can implement and learn from and be inspired from and so there's really something for everyone there i've had tons of people read it that are not moms and they get just as much out of it well well what we're talking about is we all get to be a hot mess i know benny probably could relate to that too at some point in times in our lives we you know the hot mess thing is so relatable and it doesn't just mean that you know hot mess at this and hot It means, you know, there is a definition of what you talk about in the book and what you mean by that. But the point is, it's a book that goes to solution. That's what I love. Just like today's show. So it goes to solution. It's not just that. So gratitude, grateful. How can I, Allie, got to help me. How am I going to be grateful about bad things? Job loss now. And job insecurity is like one of the number one things on people's mind. How can I be grateful? Okay. Well, before I I get into that, which I'm Mm. going to do in a minute, I wanted to just finish up the part of the conversation we were talking about before the break. And that is why people are resistant to gratitude. And I think that it's because... To be grateful doesn't mean you're like happy-go-lucky all the time. Everything's perfect. Like you have this fake 
facade or persona where you can't ever admit that anything's wrong. So I think that's a misconception out there. You can be really grateful and still have some stress in your life. They, they're not mutually exclusive. So I think people think, well, I have to ignore everything that's going on that's not great if I'm going to be gra- grateful. And that's not the case. So one thing that I always have my clients do is make a stress gratitude list. And what I do is I take like a big piece of paper and draw a line down the middle and make two columns. And one side is stress and one side is gratitude. And I put a song on or, you know, just make a nice relaxing environment. You can do this at home. And you take a few minutes and you write down everything you're stressed about. Because we have to acknowledge our stress and say it's okay to have these emotions and feelings and I'm not going to sweep them under the rug. I'm going to deal with them. So I acknowledge that I have these stresses. But then after you're done with the stress, you go to the gratitude side of the paper. And for each thing you wrote on the stress side, you write two things on the gratitude side. So yes, you have stress in your life. But at the end, the gratitude list is twice as long. So you see, even though they're stressed, there's so much more to be grateful for. And this is a tool that I talk about in the book, actually. I love this. So, okay. So I just really wanted to make sure I got to talk about that. Yeah. So when bad things happen, my advice is always to look for the lesson. We may not see what the lesson is even for a while, but every single situation, good, bad, difficult, enjoyable, not enjoyable, has something to teach us. And when we realize what it is, we're grateful for it. So when you get to the other side of the situation and you realize how much you evolved and how much you changed and how much you grew from it, you can actually be grateful for it. So I'll give an example. This isn't, you know, losing a job, but this was something that was stressful in my life. I had a falling out with a very good friend. I've never even had so much as a fight with a friend before. And I had a major, major falling out. I talk about this in the book. Mm. And at first it was so hard and I was hurt and I was defensive Mm. and it was all about how I was wronged basically in my mind. But over time I examined the situation and I really saw some things in my own behavior that I didn't like, that I wanted to change and this was a place for growth. And I really, really did grow from realizing that and accepting that I had room for growth and that I wouldn't have seen it if this fight hadn't occurred. So... I became to a pla- I came to a place where I really did feel grateful for the situation as hard as it was to go through. I was great grateful at the end of it because I saw the lessons in it. But it definitely took me time. I would say it took a little while to get to the gratitude phase. But when you go through something that's really hard, you learn lessons, you take responsibility for your actions, for your thoughts, you grow, and when you can when you have a little space from it, you can see how ultimately no matter what it is, it made you a better stronger person well you know part of this too is I love that you talked about this because I just had the same thing with a friend not too long ago I I, my heart felt so I was my heart hurt so badly Allie Yes, I can just did because we don't expect that from our friends, do we? Especially not as adults. I'm like, I I thought it was be easier when I was an adult. It was Uh, way harder. It is way harder. Why do you think that is? Do you do you think that we think? And and I'm talking about a close friend, like I think you're talking about, like a seriously close friend, right? As a seriously close friend, right? And we think, how could something like that ever happen? I mean. You know, what did you, can I ask you this question? I know this is going to be a little bit off topic, but not. What did you do with your feelings? Um, I really, it took me a little while to get to examining them and really releasing them. But I have this whole process for, I call it my five-step process for true forgiveness. And what I do is I first become aware of them. I allow myself to really become aware of them. Then I allow myself to sit in stillness and really connect with the feelings and feel them. And then I release them, truly, truly release. And then I find gratitude for them. And Mm -hmm. then I make a choice to um, decide better what's allowed to come into my life and what's not. Where am I going to put my attention, which is something we're going to talk about. Yeah, but let's talk about this one for a minute because, you know, 
I think that that this is this is really I think where a lot of the confusion about gratitude comes from this point right here that you're bringing up and you know it's hard when you've had an enormous loss and let's you know move beyond the idea of you know uh, uh, issues with a friend but sometimes we go through loss uh, I can for myself I can remember a time where you know I had just lost my job and then my sister passed away and then my mom passed away oh wow and I I know and I thought to myself you know wow and it wasn't till later what what points of gratitude I went to and what I became grateful about in looking back I wasn't grateful that they were no longer here but I became grateful that I had mended a relationship with my sister that I had mended the relationship with my stepmom. So we're not saying that you're not going to go through a grieving process, but we we can also find ways to celebrate things. Is that is did, do I have that am I close with that or not? Yeah, I think so. And it's like you almost um at the end of that, of the end of so many tough things happening and making it through to the other side, you almost feel grateful for yourself. It's like you had depths of strength that you didn't even know you had. And had you not had so much hardship, you may not have ever found. And so think about what that strength and that perseverance to keep your head above water has done for you since then. You know, who who knows how things would have turned out differently if you had never connected with that. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, I mean, it is a big conversation, and that's why I'm so glad to have you here joining us today. Uh, When we come back, we're going to talk about what it means to put our attention in the right place. And then later on in the show, Allie is going to take us us through an amazing gratitude meditation. Uh, And it will be 10 minutes, and we are going to dedicate that segment completely to her and to all of you. Let's take a short break, everyone. We'll be right back. Tune in to Sheer Alchemy with Leslie Fontaine on TransformationTalkRadio.com and get ready to stir up your passions, identify your blocks, and shift into an entirely new existence. Leslie Fontaine is a transformation catalyst and clairvoyant who uses her intuitive and energetic gifts to catapult listeners into living the life they were born to live. Whether it's shifting from scarcity to abundance, from emotional pain into joy, or from illness into to help. Leslie will help you step into the true essence and power of all that you are with the help of the Ascended Masters and Archangels. You will not be the same. Visit TransformationTalkRadio.com for show dates and times and LeslieFontaine.com to say yes to explosive abundance. Naturopathic doctor, founder of the Martha's Vineyard Holistic Retreat, and author of the New York Times bestseller, 21 Pounds in 21 Days, Dr. Ronnie DeLuce has helped tens of thousands of people, including celebrities and athletes, with her message of lifestyle change. Now, Dr. Ronnie DeLuce wants to help you. You, too, can be saved. Email Dr. Ronnie DeLuce at info at ronniedeleuceonradio.com and visit mvholisticretreat.com. Dr. Ronnie DeLuce, your partner in wellness. Tune in to the hit show, Get Into It, Winning at the Game of Life with intuitive energy healer and medium Lynn Brown on Transformation Talk Radio. Get ready to bring the magic of soul into every aspect of your life. Learn how to use spirit tools and experience the immediate connection with yourself as a spiritual being with natural spiritual abilities as you are guided on the pathway to success and joy. Visit ruintuit.com. That's the letter R, the letter U, intuit.com. And get into it now. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. 
enlightening, humorous, and compassionate. Listen live to The Kelly Ballard Show, insight and inspiration from the great beyond. Kelly is a fourth-generation medium and intuitive who covers topics ranging from grief, spirit guides, and listening to your intuition. Kelly can help you get answers and guidance from the other side with a little bit of humor and a lot of healing. Tune in to The Kelly Ballard Show, Thursdays at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, here on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hey, everybody, welcome back. It's so great. Allie Katz is in the house. And, uh, you know, Allie, would you just tell folks how they can sign up for your newsletter and get those inspirational tips from you? Yes, I would love to. You can find me at livemoreradio.com. And there's a big um, banner across the top where you can sign up for my weekly inspirational newsletter. I send out tips and I share stories and videos every week. They're really, really fun. And they give a lot of great information, too. I love it. All right. So Allie is going to help us with something that I feel is really the secret. This is the secret to manifestation right here we're going to talk about. And that is gratitude leading to putting our attention in the right places, leading to getting the things we actually want in life. And, you know, this is really cool to talk about it. Uh, And I love that you've made this connection because I'll tell you, there are a lot of us took us a while to make it, Allie. You know, it's interesting. So much of it is about your intentions and your perspective and and your choice. We always have a choice to look for the good or the bad in a situation, in a day, in a, on a minute-to-minute basis, right, in a conversation. This actually reminds me of a conversation I had with my – well, he, he was nine. Now he's 10. With my son one morning, I had read um, – I always do some spiritual reading after my meditation in the morning, and I was reading A Course in Miracles, which is an amazing metaphysical text, and it said, peace, joy, and love abide in me, and it was such a beautiful message and an outlook on life, and I loved it, and of course, the way the universe works is, I'm glad I had read it, because two hours later, I was in the car driving my kids to school, and somehow we began talking about doing good deeds, And I had one of these aha moments and decided to bring what I had read into the conversation I was having with my kids. And I told my kids, you know, guys, doing nice things for others comes naturally to you because you're filled with peace and love and joy. And we all have a spark of God's goodness in us. And when we do nice things for people, our spark grows brighter. And my nine-year-old replied, yes, mom, but we all have hatred in us too. And he loves to highlight the other side of the argument always, which I always tell him I think he should be a lawyer. And I told him that, yes, we all do have a tiny bit of that hatred in us as well, but we're everyone is filled with positive and negative emotions, but it's up to us to decide where to put our attention. We have a choice. If we focus on the good stuff, that's what gets bigger, and we have the power to decide where we place our energy and our attention. And this really pertains to gratitude. If you focus on what you're grateful for, on that positive energy and that positive intention, that's what will grow in your life. But if you focus on the negative all around you and the bad that's being done to you and the things that are out of your control, then that's sort of the vibration you're going to be in. And in terms of manifesting, you want to put out the vibe of the good stuff. And that's what you're going to get back. So manifesting is all about telling the universe what you want very clearly, vibing with it, believing it is coming 100%. It's like you already have it. And then taking inspired action. We don't sit on our butts and just wait for something to happen to us, but there's always a situation that's presented. So let's say I am, you know, getting ready to launch a new course, okay? And I tell the universe that I want my course to sell out and I vibe with that, but then I have to be willing to take inspired action. Let's say I am at the grocery store standing in line to someone and someone says, what do you do? Well, then maybe I bring up my course and then they're interested in it and they want more information. It's like you have to take action too. It doesn't just happen. So it kind of all works together. Does that make sense? It does make sense because, you know, one of the things that I loved is, um, you know, I, I I love the idea of understanding the power of now, but I also love the idea of understanding the power of next. And in, in, and part of that is 
to really, really look at the power and potential of what we're carrying in our vision as opposed to future tripping. You know what I'm saying? And it's kind of like what you just talked about. It's like, here we are in the world, and what are we grateful or not grateful for? And, you know, Allie, maybe you can touch upon this. But, you know, I guess one of the things we don't truly get is what happens when we're not grateful for something, right? You know, the absence of gratitude has an impact. Well, life is a lot sweeter when you focus on the good stuff. So I think people that don't ever focus on gratitude, it's just, it's not an existence I would ever choose to live. So I can't, I can't judge someone I don't know, or I mean, I I try not to judge anyone, but I don't know what's going on in every single person's head. But I can just tell you that when you focus on gratitude, it is such a nicer way to live, such a better perspective to have because you're focusing on the good. You're living in that vibration. You know, so you can, if, if you're not in a good place, then you might need to look and see where is your attention? Is your attention on the positive or the negative? And I always tell people ways to do this is to surround yourself with like-minded people. You know, if you're around friends all the time that are gossiping like crazy, you're probably going to gossip too. If you, you know, hang out with people that don't gossip, then it's not as tempting. You know, they say that you're like the equivalent of the average of the five people that you hang out with the most. So if you kind of think about the five people in your life that you're with the most, think about, do they have an attitude of gratitude? How are, what's, what's their outlook on life? Think about who you're surrounding yourself with. Draw boundaries. If something doesn't feel good to you, you don't have to participate in it. You don't have to participate in any conversation that doesn't feel good to you. So you have and to I, start paying attention to what feels good to you and what doesn't. Exactly. And and part of this is also understanding what to settle for, what not to settle for, what to negotiate, and what not to negotiate. Uh, and, you know, so often we try to please other people, right? I don't know if you do this or not. <laughs> Well, I think I used to um, exactly. before I, you know, started to live so much more authentically because I had so much more confidence for my spiritual practice and being able to make better decisions for myself. So I think a lot of going with the crowd comes from an insecurity or lack of inner awareness. I call it your yums and your yucks. So paying attention. Sometimes we get confused in our head, but our body doesn't ever lie. So if you're talking about somebody or you're presented with a situation to be a part of and you get a tightness in your stomach or you feel like you can't breathe or your heart starts beating faster and you just have that overall yuck feeling, that's your body telling you it's not a good idea. Turn the conversation around. Just say you're busy and you can't do whatever someone wants you to do. Pay attention to the signals that your body gives you and help. it helps you make better choices and decisions. Well, and you know, one of the things I know you do is you put your attention and focus on what you read, what you pay attention to. Um, you know, and how we get plugged into those things and how we get influenced, you know, and, and, and I think that we live in a world right, right now where everybody is so connected, Allie, you know, our kids are connected, our grandkids are connected, our spouse, everybody's connected, you know, we're connected to social media, we're connected to the internet. And I think I shared this with you the other day, 92% of all moms own smartphones. They are, they are one of the fastest growing, if not the largest segment of the American population that is not just plugged in when they're in their homes, but they take that smartphone and plug it in their cars and off they go. They are plugged in. And so how do you, you know, how how would you suggest we talk about the power of plugging in and what that means in terms of how it influences our attention? Well, when you take a few minutes to decompress and sit in stillness every day, there are so many benefits for your body, mind, and spirit. And you begin to focus on the present moment. You begin to focus inward and connect with yourself and really get more self-aware and what does feel good to you. You kind of listen to your heart, you know, and, and you really get away from all the noise of life and just connect with what feels good to you. So you need that break. Everybody needs a break every day, just a few minutes. And I'm not talking about reading or listening to music. I'm talking about a break where you sit alone with yourself. 
and really get to know yourself in a whole different way. And when you do, you're much more attuned to your yums and your yucks for sure. Well, and, you know, part of that is getting in tune and then knowing what to do with it. Um, you know, what is it that we learn from, as a mom, you know, what what are some of the things we can learn from our children? I mean, so often we hear, you know, we walk around and we, you know, just beat our kids up verbally in so many ways. But they, there's some wisdom that we have about learning from a group of people that are not tainted by, let's call it, having a bad life, so to speak. Well, you know what? The biggest thing we can learn from kids is present moment awareness. Really being in the present moment, not ruminating about the past, not worrying mm. about the future. Kids live with present moment awareness. When they're playing a game, they are full on in that game. Whereas we're playing a game and we're like thinking about what we're making for dinner and the project we're, we have at work and what time our next conference call is. We, we need to get a little bit of that back. We can really, really learn that from our kids. I love it. Uh, we're going to take a short break, everyone. When we come back, oh, Allie's going to do something amazing. We'll get to experience being in the present moment of gratitude. Allie Katz joining me here today. Let's take a short break, everyone. We'll be right back. When you get what you want, but not what you need. When you feel so tired, but you can't sleep. Tired of traditional talk? People pontificating about this or that, the left or the right. Sometimes the truth is just all lost in the noise. Tune in each week to Straight Talk with Chuck Gallagher on TransformationTalkRadio.com, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, as nationally known guests talk about what's important to you, your life, your concerns, and your success. Tune in and turn on to Straight Talk with Chuck Gallagher. Visit ChuckGallagher.com for more information. Dr. Loves Quickies. Mary's about ready to give love the shove, because no matter what she tries, guys don't know that she's alive. To turn guys on, she needs to turn on those green lights, nonverbal cues that say, over here. Most guys won't approach unless they're cleared for landing. So ladies, to kickstart your love life, turn on those green lights and flash your pearly whites. I'm Dr. Jamie Turndorf of AskDrLove.com. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Stephan each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. Pure Encapsulations is committed to producing the most complete line of research-based nutritional supplements from fish oil to probiotics to multivitamins and more. Available through qualified health professionals and community pharmacists, finished products are pure and hypoallergenic to optimize the long-term health of all patients, even the most sensitive. With Pure Encapsulations, you can rest assured that you're getting the purest and highest quality nutritional supplements available. Ask a qualified healthcare practitioner about Pure Encapsulations today and discover why it's the supplement brand of choice for healthcare professionals worldwide. For more information, please visit www.pureencapsulations.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. And the tears come streaming down your face When you lose something you can't replace 
Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. It's so great to have Allie joining joining all of us here today. For those of you out there on Amazon, Hot Mess to Mindful Mom, 40 Ways to Bring Balance, Joy, and Happiness into Your Everyday. Um, as we do uh, with each show Allie does, uh, we love to save this last segment for an amazing meditation that Allie will guide us through. Allie, thank you so much for today. Of course. I just want everyone to get into a comfortable position where you're sitting up and your hands are in your lap. Your arms are hanging comfortably with your hands in your lap. Your legs can be down sitting in a chair. You can be cross-legged, however you're comfortable. And we're going to take a few minutes to connect with this present moment and focus on gratitude. As we talked about, I truly believe the more we show gratitude in our lives, the more the universe gives us to be grateful for. And what we put our attention on thrives. So if we focus on the good stuff, more will be given to us. And focusing on gratitude opens our heart even more to love and compassion for others and ourselves. And when we take the time to really notice the beauty around us in the big ways and the small, the world becomes an even more special place. So this is a time not to be searching for more, but to appreciate what we have in this moment, right here and right now. So let's start by relaxing your body from the top of your head all the way to your toes. Beginning with your scalp, feeling it really let go and relax. Feeling your forehead relax. And your eyes and your cheeks, your jaw, even your tongue, feeling your neck relax, and as you exhale, you let your shoulders fall away from your ears, feels so good to let them go, exhale and feel them fall away. And you feel a sense of calm spread across your chest and around to your back. And your belly is nice and soft. And your hips sink into the cushion of the chair supporting you. And your right leg relaxes from hip to toe. And then your left. And I invite you to bring your attention to your breath. And for a moment or two, focus on the sensation of your breath coming in and out of your nose. Notice how the air is cool as you breathe in and warmer as you breathe out. And let a sense of gratitude overwhelm you for that breath that helps to sustain us and keep us alive. Our breath is usually on autopilot and we may take it for granted. And then you can shift your attention to how your belly expands as you inhale and contracts as you exhale. And pay attention to how the way your body works all on its own and feel a sense of gratitude for that. How lucky we are. And I'd like you to let your mind travel to something in nature that you're grateful for. Maybe it's the beach or the mountains. Maybe it's the feeling of the grass under your feet or the water on your skin as you swim. Feel yourself in this place in nature. Notice the sensations. What do you hear? What do you see? What do you smell? 
And what can you touch? And now I invite you to move to your home. What is something about your house that you are truly grateful for? Maybe it's your bathtub where you like to take bubble baths or your kitchen where you prepare meals to sustain and nurture yourself and your family. There's nothing too small to be grateful for. It could be your favorite spot on the couch or a bookshelf with all your favorite books. Picture yourself there now and let gratitude flow through you. And now I'd like you to think of a friend that you have an especially close relationship with. What quality do they have that makes them so special to you? What is it about them that you treasure? Hold that with you for a moment and focus on how lucky you are to have them in your life. Now I invite you to think of a family member that you especially love. Is it the way they laugh or make you laugh? Is it the way they're there for you unconditionally? What do you love about them and can't imagine living without? And finally, I'd like you to think of a quality in yourself that you're grateful for embodying. What is your favorite gift that you bring to the world? What are you proud to bring to this world and to those that you love and care for? Hold on to the gratitude you have for this quality that makes you truly special and unique. Take the time to celebrate yourself and acknowledge this wonderful thing about yourself. And you can begin to take some longer breaths in and out of your nose, stretch a little bit, notice the sounds around you. And when you feel ready, you can open your eyes to a wonderful, beautiful world all around you. How'd that feel, Pat? Wow. Every time you do one of these, I I totally forget what I'm doing. (laughs) <laughs> That's you, the you know point. What, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I totally forget what I'm doing. And, you know, I think it's only through instinct that I realize when you ask me that, that I know, realize what I'm doing. I think it is so very beautiful and very powerful. And when you are asking the questions about think about a friend, think about, oh, my God, I just my heart was so filled with love. Oh, because I do have a very, very dear friend. And, you know, in the world that I grew up in, to have somebody that is so special is just an enormous gift. And I'm going to hold that moment of gratitude now with me. Oh, I'm um, so glad. Uh, oh, it was just beautiful. Allie, thank you so very much. Thank you for all that you do. What's your personal message? What would you like to leave us with today? I think to just take the time to notice the beauty all around you, big, little, 
there's nothing too small to be grateful for. And just to, like you said, find something to be grateful for and hold that in your heart. Take that loving energy throughout the day with you. And I promise the days will be sweeter and brighter and more enjoyable if you do. Absolutely. Alley Cats, everybody. I'm Dr. Pat. Thank you for tuning us in and turning us on. We'll see you next time on the show.